Singapore Energy Week. And at the end of the first day of this global conference in energy, some of the key news and themes that have come out of the conference. Well, with me to discuss this first day of discussion and thought are two important people. Rosé René Almendras is the Energy Minister for Philippines, and also Clyde Russell is a commodities columnist with Reuters. Gentlemen, thanks to both of you for joining me today. Now, one of the key bits of news that came out of the conference today came from the UAE minister talking about a reasonable area for oil prices. Clyde, he said 80 to $100 a barrel sounds reasonable to him. What's your takeaway from that statement? Well, Minister O'Hanley doesn't often nominate price levels. This is quite an uh, unusual event to actually have him talking about oil. I think it's probably at the right sort of level that he's pitching it at. $80 a barrel seems to be the floor for oil at the moment. There's not much chance of it going below there. Too much production gets shut in. There's not enough incentive to invest. At the other, at the other end, over $100 a barrel in the world economy starts to have problems. And if you look at it now, the main oil grades uh, for, for this part of the world in Asia are already above $100 a barrel. So it does seem to be a little bit of scope for prices to move lower and not upset the producers. But at the moment, 80 to 100 would seem a very reasonable assumption for where oil should be. Minister Almendras, I think you were there when that statement was being made as part of a broader discussion. Does that sound like a reasonable price level to you? Well, for the Philippines in particular, yes. I'd be very happy if it fell, fell below $100 today. I can go home tomorrow smiling and be happy about it. I think what was basically discussed was, um, I've been trying to push the minister since last night's welcome reception on, on a real number, but he, he would rather give a range. Was ideally, as, as Clyde mentioned, anything below 80 discourages investment, anything above 100 is there. It's also the reality, some of the economies, particularly growing or you know, expanding economies like ours do need that breathing space. Also, um, both Europe and the U.S. need uh, the present economic challenges. Do do need some some push in that direction. I I, I agree with Clyde. It's it's a good number. We'd be very happy. With. Of course, the lower the better, but ideally that range is still a workable range for us. So it would make you happy. Are you confident that you're going to get that type of price level? I think that's the question that needs to be answered. Uh, so if, even if somebody did say it's 80 to 100, then why is it where it is today? Why is it way up there and not, not coming down? Uh, Libya's coming in, a few other questions. The impending reduction of production of Saudi Arabia is also in question. So these are... These are inputs that need to be considered. And I do hope people are listening to these numbers. All right. Well, we'll hope they're listening out. And we'll see if there are more numbers sort of bandied about during this week. Meanwhile, Clyde, a- another key theme coming out today, securing energy is a very wide theme. But in Asia in particular, where we're seeing fast growth, certainly compared to other parts of the world, a concern about what types of energy we're using and how Asia is sort of powering itself up. What are you hearing about sustainability along with securing energy? Well, there seems to be a, a tremendous contradiction if you are in Asia and you're a fast-growing economy. On the one hand, you need energy supplies to grow your economy, to try and lift people out of poverty and give them a lifestyle approaching what we in the West would call middle class. On the other hand, you have the problem of global warming and burning too much fossil fuel, creating a whole host of other problems for your economy that leads to food security issues. We've seen the floods in Southeast Asia. The ultimate effect of that is that it makes your food supply a lot less certain. So there is this tremendous contradiction on how do you resolve those issues. I think at the moment Asian governments are putting too much emphasis on securing the energy and worrying about the emissions later. There seems to be uh, incredible reliance on coal you have nations in Southeast Asia that were not using coal at all, that you relied on gas and hydro. And now they're talking about coal plants. I don't think that's adding to the solution. I think that's actually creating another problem for the, for the region as well. Well, Minister Almendros, let me put that to you. Is that fair for as Asia powers up and really develops that it needs to think about sustainability at the same time? After all, you're trying to grow and develop quickly. I think in our case, the major push in the Philippines has been self-reliance. We've been always been energy importing. And we found ourselves in a situation where in developing the indigenous resources meant developing green energy, which is developing hydro and geothermal, which is where we are now. 66.8% of 
generation is actually green. 53% of generation is actually renewable with hydro and geothermal at that. So uh, while Clyde is correct, some economies have had to cope. I, we are also planning to build a few more coal plants, but these are really intermediate steps until about 2016 as we try to build a base load capacity to insulate against the climate change situation that the hydros um, you know, constantly fluctuate in. Uh, yes, Asia needs to grow because demand is growing. We need to answer it. Um, I've always said that what should keep a Minister of Energy awake at night is the energy mix. Energy mix today, five years from now, 10, 15, 20 years from now. In Asia in particular, I suggest there are four perspectives that you need to look at. One is the economic, obviously. The second is technology. But Asia has a lot more social dimension to energy than most other places. Uh, some countries still subsidize a lot of their energy and there's still that question of social implication of taking out those subsidies and of course the environment. I think more than anything else, although the Philippines is not one of the world's biggest polluters, the fact that 66% of our generation is now green speaks well of the fact that there are some countries that are able to be a positive input. We'll leave it on that note. Uh, Minister Jose Rene Almandras of the Philippines, thanks very much for joining me. Clyde Russell of Reuters, thanks very much. Thank we'll you. leave it on that note from Singapore for now. I'm Tara Joseph. This is Reuters.